And to join Victor in those sentiments, good morning, God. Okay, that's our mantra now. I want you all to join me on three. One, two, three. Good morning, God. Was that a little bit too much? No. Oh, <laughs> she was kind of shaking her head. It was like, whoa. Energy. See, my, my, <laughs> my wife Dawn, who I'm excited that she has to be over here in a couple of weeks to meet you, because she's got a book called Stumbling Towards the Buddha that some of you have read, and it's a really powerful book, and her second book is coming out in about a month or two. She's an amazing person, but she said, you know, Ben, you need to tell them that that's the way you wake up. It's like 4 a.m. comes and I go, boing, good morning, God. That's not the way my wife wakes up. <laughs> She has a little bit of the same response you did. That maybe I need to move to the back of the room, the energy. She's a little slower waking up. But it's so perfect to realize that what Jenny read to us in the Daily Word, what your, your uh, creed, what we just read up here, what unity teaches because I'm talking about the five principles over the next several weeks. And the first principle is, there is only one power and one presence in my life, God the good, omnipotent, and that's the truth, period. No qualifiers, no explaining it, no looking at it any differently. But how many of you can say it but there's times in our lives that we question it. Right. And that's what's important to understand is the process of life from birth to death is a karmic journey. Where we come from is God. We can say that's pure consciousness. That's the essence of who we are. And uh, as Palma said, I've been on a 27-year journey with Christianity, Buddhism, science, unity. And the, the challenge for, for us is to turn towards our suffering in our lives, the difficulties in your life, to turn towards them, go into the pain and suffering when everything in your head says, get out of here, get away from this which is what we all do, and we all look for peace and happiness in the materialism of the world. That's how we start out. That's what we're taught. And then after a while we find out, you know, this materialism, it, nothing bad or wrong with it, but I don't find any lasting peace or happiness. And so we start looking for something. And so did I. I was an attorney. And... I'm an attorney, my life isn't going well, after a few years my marriage is coming to an end, I faced my own alcoholism 27 years ago, I started in AA, that's when I started waking up, AA taught me to start accepting what's going on in my life, acceptance of what is, not what my head wants it to be, my head will always say, I want more of the good stuff and less of the bad stuff. And where my journey's taken me is an open hand. Because in truth, I don't know what's good or bad. We really don't know what's good or bad. So, for these five classes, I'm here for us to play. Because one of my mantras is, the kingdom of heaven is within. And to enter the kingdom, I must come as a child. Curious, innocent, trusting, vulnerable. How many of us live our lives that way? Raise your hand if you live your life that way. We learn very soon as children, whoa, who do you trust? 
Don't be vulnerable. You're going to get hurt. Who's honest? All of these qualities, and we forget who we are. And a true spiritual path isn't about more stuff. It's about less stuff. It's about remembering who you are. Remembering where you came from. And so, what I want to do is to give you a Buddhist Christian scientific perspective on unity's five principles. And if you say that five times real fast, <laughs> and so what Spirit gave me was, how, how many of you know the five unity principles and can repeat them just off the top of your head? Raise your hand. Yeah, I knew Rochelle, Rochelle would be one of them. You, you think so, yes. Well, the, I was the same way. I mean, in the 1990s when I started in unity, and these five principles, and they've kind of morphed and but the way I, I'm just telling you the way I learned them, but there's a lot of different variations. So it's like, you know what? We need a summer camp for Unity students. That's what I proposed to the board. Let's, let's do a summer camp for Unity students. And what I, so this summer camp is called God Camp. The first Unity principle is God. The second unity principle, now these are not necessarily in the, in the correct order, but God, because it's an acronym, to help you remember it, God, C for Christ in you, A is for action. We have to take action in the world. It isn't just enough to come here on Sunday morning and we can sit here and feel really good, you know, and get in a circle and go kumbaya. Oh, peace song today, not kumbaya, okay. <laughs> Because I, I used to do that down at Unity Temple on the plaza. And on the plaza, there's lots of traffic. And I would leave Unity Temple feeling really good. And I would get in my car. And by the time I was getting out of this huge parking garage with people that wouldn't move, and by the time I got out on 47th Street, where did my kumbaya go? <laughs> So action, God, Christ, action, thoughts held in mind. Thoughts held in mind is every thought, every concept, every belief in your head is not true. We get trapped in a conceptual framework that we think is true. It's a conceptual framework. That's why the Jews have a God. And their God chose them. Well, what about me? God likes you better. Remember, remember some of you older people, remember Smothers Brothers? Mom always liked you best. Well, God likes Victor better. So, where's, so the Jews have a God, and you know the wisdom in the Jewish tradition? The way they originally spelled God is unpronounceable. It's Y-H-W-H. -H. So what do we do from a belief system? You can't pronounce Y-H-W-H, -H, right? But when they wrote, wrote down God's name, that's the way they spelled it. Well, that's not good enough for us mind or headed people, strong headed people. So we added an A and an E and we call it Yahweh. No, 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 no. From the Jewish tradition, you don't speak the name of God. God is not understandable, but God is knowable. So we got a Jewish God that likes the Jewish people. And the, the Muslims have a God that likes the Muslims. And we've got a Catholic <coughs> church that has a God that likes the Catholics. And I grew up in a Baptist church in Tulsa, Oklahoma and I heard there that they have a God that likes us best. And all those people that are not in church on Sunday morning are in big trouble. Wow. That's a conceptual God. So my, so my journey has been how do I know God? Where do I find God? 
So I'm not going to leave you hanging. God camp. Prayer. But for me, prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening to God. And I got involved in insight meditation that comes out of the Buddhist tradition. And I did silent retreats. No reading, no writing, no radio, no television, no Facebook. <laughs> Big trouble. You're alone for 10 days, 30 days with nothing but your own mind. And it gets really messy. And it is not a pleasant experience. But what I found is in the silence is where the knowingness of the divine shows up. No name is needed. No label. No head work is needed. No conceptual framework is needed. But when you feel the presence, when you tap into the stillness that can't be disturbed, things start getting purified. You turn towards your suffering, not run away from it. You go into the suffering and find out that it's an illusion. It's not real. It certainly feels real. Oh, man. And it's really hard and challenging to do this, but it leads to liberation. It leads to freedom. So now I've given you an acronym, God Camp. God, Christ, action, thoughts held in mind, the egoic mind, and prayer and meditation. That's the five unity principles. And they all lead you to the experience of the divine. And in the midst of it, we still have problems. I still have problems. But you start finding out that there's a difference between the relative physical world that we inhabit as this body in the five senses. Seeing, hearing, smell, taste, and touch. But from that experience of the human form and the five senses, we develop thoughts, beliefs, concepts, and, and then we get confused thinking that that's God. And it's not. It's a concept. It's a trap. How do you go beyond? That's the mystery of life itself. And so in the absolute realm, in the absolute realm, God, there is only one power and one presence in my life. God, the good, omnipotent. It's non-conceptual. You can't put God in a box. God isn't this, this old man with a white beard reaching out and touching us. But what a beautiful imagery it is because it will feel like that once you get filled with the Holy Spirit. It will feel like you have been touched. The challenge is to stay in that place because every one of us have already experienced God. God is the creation of the universe. God is beyond the beyond. One Theologians said, I don't want to know God. I want to know the Godhead. Where did God come from? Some people say there's only one power and one presence in my life and in the universe. God the good omnipotent. Well, I got, I got news for you folks. The universe is not all there is. Because science tells us the universe is expanding. What is it, what is it expanding into? Hmm... Makes you go, hmm. So there are unanswerable questions. And that's what we want to explore. What we want to entertain is going beyond your own mind. Going beyond your beliefs and concepts. See, I love it that you all have a course in miracles here on Wednesday night. Man, I love the course. I've never been able to complete it. Because if you sit with it, if you feel it in your body, oh, it will turn you inside out. But what I do, do carry with me from that is there is only one presence, one presence, one power. No, that's not the course. Now, the course is Jesus from the other side coming through. How many of you studied the course? Raise your hand. You, right. What is real cannot be threatened. 
What is unreal does not exist. Herein lies the peace of God. Any time you feel threatened, that is not who you are. That's what the Course is all about, is helping you to see the illusion that this physical world is no different than a dream state. We're all sitting here dreaming because what do we want to do? We want to wake up. Now, if you tell me, Ben, I am awake. I'm sitting here in this chair. My butt's starting to get tired because I've been sitting here too long. I'm awake. Sorry. No, you're not. Now, if you tell me, Ben, I am so present in my body. This body is 99.9999999% space. This body is pure emptiness. Because that's science. Atoms are 99.9999% space, right? And atoms make up molecules, and molecules make up cells, and cells make up this body. But the way the body operates, these five senses cannot discern the space in here. But you know what? I've experienced it as pure space. After years of meditation, after years of suffering, I was on a retreat. In the middle of this 10-day retreat, at 2.30 in the morning, my body dissolved. And I was present in pure consciousness. And it was like, whoa. Now, I never took acid, never smoked marijuana, never took LSD. But what I see it being presented as, as that must be what it's like. I was like, whoa, man. And I collapsed consciousness back into the density of the body. And, and it, it was dense and heavy. And I moved back into pure consciousness. All, the, all the, the sensations in the body registered in consciousness. That's where everything is registering in consciousness. It's not registering in your head. Memory isn't in your brain. It's a field of energy around your body. Deepak Chopra has a great explanation of that. Who we are is consciousness. We are in the world, but we're not of the world. That's an old cliche. Everybody's heard that forever, right? I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how does that feel? Oh, that hurts. Yeah, the body hurts. The body carries pain. The body carries the karmic creation of this form from consciousness. Now, I told you, Buddhist, Christian, and science, let me throw in a little Hinduism, a little Advaita Vedanta, because in Hinduism gave us yoga, gave us the chakras, and Vedanta, which goes back to the beginnings of Hinduism, because Hinduism is a collection of, of Vedanta, and Bhagavad Gita, and, and they stole a bunch of Buddhism. And, yeah, they stole it. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> but Advaita Vedanta says that we are consciousness, but they give us a formula to work with it. And that formula is that us sitting here is physical consciousness. And it's the expression of the karma that comes through subtle consciousness which are the dream states, the chakras, and did you know that even your memories of past and figuring on the future is it subtle consciousness because it's not real, it's a dream state. Your past is a dream state. Used to be an attorney, handled divorces. My client would say one thing about the marriage and I would talk to the attorney on the other side and that his client would say something else and it's like, were these two people married? They have such radically different stories because we all have filters that's conditioned by our karma because Eckhart Tolle says we're drawing every experience we need for our soul's evolution. You are creating the life you're looking at out here. Everything in your life is your creation. 
You want to change that creation? First off, don't try to do it by changing the people out there. They're simply dream characters in your life. You have to go inside. You go inside, you change what's going on in here, you'll change what's going on out there. I'm a living testimonial to it. 